Hi, everybody. This is Debbie at Moto Brat Women's Running Academy. And today I am talking a little bit about how we find roads to ride on. So recently I posted a proposed route for a possible trip um, in the springtime. And it is a trip um, starting from where I live in Pittsburgh, North Carolina, going towards the mountains and eventually ending up in Maggie Valley. And this would be about a three day trip. And it would average about 260 miles each day of the trip. Roads that um, that I've selected for this trip are, you know, stereotypically the mountain roads that, you know, we love to ride on as motorcyclists. And of course, not everybody likes to ride on those curvy, windy roads. I have plenty of friends who, prepare, who prefer to just ride straight and, and to not hit the curvies. Um, but for me, that's where I thrive. But for some of those roads, you know, yes, that, you know, they do require some experience. And the only way that we get experience, of course, is to challenge ourselves to ride those. Um, if you've never done curvy roads before, I wouldn't say, hey, go challenge yourself and, you know, go ride the tail of the dragon or go ride the moonshiner or, you know, any of those those um, those very popular routes and roads in around the Maggie Valley area or you know, that, that Western North Carolina area. I would say that you should find roads in your area to begin practicing on that have um, not quite as severe curves and, and, you know, switchbacks. And to put time into really learning how to ride through those curves, knowing your lines, knowing when to apex in that term um, and that curve, and just knowing, you know, the appropriate technique, because that will really help to save you when you get onto those, you know, more technically advanced roads. But when I posted that, um, I had a woman who was interested in learning how to do curves better. And we kind of had an open dialogue going on that post. And I was, um, I had offered to maybe help her figure out some roads to ride where she could begin to do that in her area. And then I kind of suggested some roads for her to ride in um, the URA National Forest which is out, you know, by around that Troy, North Carolina area. It's, you know, it's getting towards the mountains. It's um, still east of Charlotte. So you're not in the mountains yet, but it's an area that, you know, it's got some, some curvy roads and, um, and, and they're fun roads and they're great roads to start challenging yourself on. After that series of, of um, conversations between her and I back and forth, I did get an email from somebody else who had seen those posts uh, and reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I'm kind of a newer rider. And, you know, she mostly rides with her spouse and is not really one to to plan rides. She more follows others, but she wanted to learn how to become a little bit more of an independent rider and learn how to map her own rides. And so she said, although she's familiar with Google Maps, um, she doesn't she's not very familiar with it and and would wanted a little bit more guidance and direction um, in how I use Google Maps to to plan my routes um, and then eventually map them out. So in this video today, I am actually just going to talk about road selection. And I'm going to just talk about, um, you know, just using Google Maps to kind of find roads and then really look at them um, and, and kind of investigate the, the road, the quality of it. Is it paved? Is it dirt? Um, and then in another video, because it can get a little bit lengthy, in another video after this, I will go ahead and show you how I do map a route in Google Maps by dropping pins and forcing Google Maps to take me uh, on a specific route that I want to take and not the route that they suggest for me. Because of course, you know, Google Maps is trying to get me there um, in the most, um, a uh, fuel efficient way or time efficient way. And of course, as a motorcyclist, I'm not really concerned about getting there the quickest way or even the most fuel efficient way. I'm looking to get there in the most fun way. And usually that's taking myself out of the way to get to where I wanna go. Um, so again, that will be in another video. But again, like I said, in this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and dive into Google Maps and and just show you how I kind of investigate different roads to ride. So let's take a second and let's check it out. Okay, so 
here is the grand scheme of kind of the general area of North Carolina that I ride in. This is the Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill area. Here's Greensboro, Winston-Salem over here. Um, here we've got um, Charlotte is over here. So this is kind of the general, you know, central area of North Carolina. A lot of the areas that I ride, I mentioned the Uwari Forest, um, which is down here. And uh, uh, Troy, North Carolina is right here. There's Troy. And there's a lot of other little towns here, Mount Gilead. Um, in Mount Gilead, there's a great restaurant called River Wild. Um, and it's right on the PD River. So that's a really nice place to ride to in the summertime and, and um, enjoy lunch on their back deck overlooking the river. Um, and it, it kind of connects with Lake Tillery. So it kind of feels like a lake at that point. Um, but there's lots of boats on the water. So it's a nice place to eat. In any event, um, to give us some context, so I live here in Pittsburgh, North Carolina, just kind of really right within that that Raleigh Durham area here, um, Raleigh Durham Chapel Hill. And I love living in this area because right now, anyway, uh, Pittsburgh is still kind of considered the country um, where I once used to live in Cary and Apex. And when I would set out for a ride on in Cary and Apex, you know, I ride through a ton of populated areas and all sorts of traffic to be able to break out more to the country. So about five years ago or five and a half years ago, I made the move out to Pittsburgh. Um, and it is a small little town, but it's a great, great little town. Um, it's artsy, it's progressive. And the best part about it is right now there is building going on, but right now it may, it, it continues to be uh, a somewhat more rural type of town or small town feel to it. Um, and where I live is I'm in a subdivision, but I leave my subdivision and immediately I am on country roads. I don't have to drive through a town. I don't have to drive through traffic. So I feel really fortunate where I live. Um, but in any event, um, if I wanted to just kind of pick out some roads to ride and, you know, what do I feel like riding today? A lot of times I'll pick a destination. But if you're a newer rider and you're trying to get comfortable with planning out a ride um, on your own, and um, you know maybe it's your first time riding solo, it's your first time planning a ride, and maybe you're not really used to very um, rural back roads. Um, I know those, my friends who might live in the same area who don't ride are definitely not as familiar with a lot of the roads that I am. Um, so if you're a newer rider, you may not even be very familiar with all the connectivity of all those, those back roads that you might live near. So the first thing I'm going to say is um, to explore. And if you want to get out in the country and you don't live very close, I would say get yourself on main roads, pick an area that's a little bit rural, not far from where you live, where you might feel comfortable riding to. And then you want to start to learn those roads. And, you know, this is kind of how we build what I call my repository of possible roads when I'm mapping out a ride, is I have to first learn a particular area. And I do that by creating quadrants um, of the road. And I'll create quadrants using roads that I know that are all connected in some way. And then I will go within that quadrant and I will want to learn the roads within that specific quadrant. So I'll get into more detail on what I mean about that. But as you can see right now from, from the zoom level I am on this map, we can see major roads. I'll zoom out a little bit more. You know, we see all the major roads. We see, you know, US 64, um, we see NC 87, we see I-40 and I-85. So we see, you know, the interstates and, you know, we see Highway 421, uh, Highway 501. So we see all the big the big roads. Here's US 1 here. This is a big one. US 1 goes way down all over the place um, in North Carolina. So we see more of our major veined roads. And though, although in some places, some of these roads can be, you know, not very trafficy, um, they are still considered, made, you know, more major veins. Um, and then we see the roads in white, which to me are your secondary roads, but they're more major secondary roads. So like this road right here is called 902. And this is a road that I ride often. So it's not a very long road, but it is a fairly major road because it it kind of takes you in that 
you know, here, here's your, here's a triangle of this area. If I was going to, if I wanted to get here to 421 and I only stayed on major roads, I'd have to come up and come down 64 and come this way. But meanwhile, you know, 92 is, although not a highway, it is a uh, two lane back road, you know, one lane either direction. So it's not a four lane highway, um, but it is a more direct route for me to get to here. It's kind of like that, as my dad would say, um, it, my dad, we used to tease him because he'd always say, well, it's the hypotenuse of the triangle. So it's faster. And, and we used to laugh at him. And, um, you know, of course, my dad watching down from heaven is probably laughing at me now because he was so wise with that advice. And that's that's exactly what this is. It's the hypotenuse of the triangle. So while I said that as motorcyclists, we're not always looking for the fastest way um, to get somewhere. Sometimes we are looking for that initially. We want to stay off um, more major roads. We are trying to get to a particular area, maybe faster for instance, if I was looking out to get out to ride in the URA forest, maybe I do want to get out there a little bit faster and a little bit more direct, but I still want to stay off main roads. Then I would try to look for those, those routes that are a little bit more direct, but, but still fun to ride on. Um, but in any event, so, you know, these are our secondary roads. Now, if I was to zoom in a little bit more, so you'll see there's 902 and then there's this road here, which if I remember correctly, this road is is deceiving because it appears to be a fairly major secondary road. But I think this is the one road that um, it actually has about a two mile span of it where it's not paved. So it's like paved, paved, paved. Oh, just kidding. Not paved, 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 paved. So um, that's what we're going to talk about also is when we're picking roads. You know, how do we know that they're paved roads and they're appropriate for us to be riding on? So. But the first thing I want to do is, as you see, as I zoom into the map more, now what's happening is, you know, there's roads popping up, like here's still 902, but when we were zoomed out in that larger view, we weren't seeing roads like this. Um, this is, you know, McLaren Road and DeWitt Smith Road, and some of these roads are really fun and scenic. Um, here, we've got a whole bunch more in here. And so all of a sudden you look and, and that kind of feels overwhelming. So one of the things that I suggest is, so when I first moved to Pittsburgh and I kind of knew the roads a little bit because I used to ride out this way, I didn't know them great. So, you know, I started just to say, well, let me get familiar with the area. Let me, let me ride a, the borders of a quadrant. So I would kind of, you know, map this out and say, okay, this is 902. Okay. That's 421. I'm crossing over and I'm going to, I'm actually expanding my quadrant to be kind of this area here. And so in one direction, I've got 64. And then here, this is Siler City Glendon Road, which is a pretty main, you know, main vein. And I would take 902 down and I would get on um, Siler City Glendon Road. And then I would ride on Bonley Road and say, okay, well, that comes to 421. And I would kind of get familiar with the route of just these four roads. And so now I kind of know where 902 takes me. 902 takes me to, to, um, Siler City Glendon Road. If I stay on that, it pretty much ends here at 42. The road does continue on the other side, but it is no longer called 902. Um, but I do also know where those roads lead to. Um, and so let's say that you were like, hey, this looks like a fun area. I'm going to ride here. But you're concerned about getting lost. So what I would say is once you're familiar with the more main roads, say, well, I know 902. And I know 4222, and then 4222, this just becomes 22, and 42 branches out this way. And the other side of this quadrant is Siler City Glendon Road. So let's say you've gotten familiar with some of these more main roads. Okay, I get it. I, I recognize these intersections um, when I get there, so I know where I am. Now I want to explore and get to know the roads within here. Because any of these roads that I take, Every single one of them is going to lead me to either 42, Siler City Glendon Road, 902, um, or 42, which I think I said already. None of these roads will lead to 22 over in this direction. Um, and, th and this is a, a good example because there's not really a ton of roads here. But, you know, you could look at this and say, well, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to I'm going to come down here and I'm going to stop at Southern Supreme Fruitcake. And if you have not ever stopped at this location and you live in this area, Definitely stop there. Um, they give tours of their factory and you get little free samples of fruit cake. So 
it's kind of a cool little place. It is literally in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it's probably one of the only things around. And um, it's a very cool little factory. And then there's a little store. Um, so definitely check that out. But, you know, you might come down here, hop back on 42, and then you might turn down here. And now you're like, hey, uh, and then you turn down here and then you come back down here. So you're retracing your steps a little bit. But now you're really starting to get to know these roads a little bit. And maybe then you come back here and you're back out on 42 and you just run up this road just to get familiarized with that. Now, like I said, this is not a very extensive connection of back roads here. But, you know, it's about getting comfortable with your area. So, you know, maybe you just spend an hour or so riding through these and you're like, hey, I feel pretty comfortable with that. Now I know all these veins off of 902 and I know where they go. Um, and they, they kind of lead me here to 42. So if I ever wanted to just quickly jump on 42, you know, I could come down 902 and I could I could get on uh, Ronald Scott Road here. Now, the other thing that we always want to think about, though, is all that that looks good. Before I was just to say, hey, I'm going to head out on 902 and I'm going to head down Ronald Scott Road um, and I'm going to ride all these roads. I first want to make sure that they're paved. Now, not to say that you can't, you know, get out there and if the road wasn't paved right here from the start, you would see that the road was dirt and you wouldn't turn there. But um, I think like a lot of more rural areas, I don't I don't think this is, you know, um, just for North Carolina. I think this is probably a lot of places that you might ride is you'll be on a road that's paved and all of a sudden it's not paved. So it's like, surprise, you know, it's, we're dirt now, we're doing dirt. So there are ones that I know that are not very long dirt roads and I will ride over them because I know, hey, this is only like a half mile of dirt and gravel and I'll just ride it slow. And I know that it's paved on the other side. Um, so if you know that and you're okay with riding on dirt and gravel, then you know at least you're prepared for it. But if you absolutely do not want to ride on dirt or gravel, then you'll say, well, I'm, not, I'm going to avoid that road. Or if you didn't check it beforehand, you'd wind up having to turn around in the road and just simply head back. The way that I would go ahead and check to see if these roads are paved is I would be like, okay, well, I want to just, I'm going to check this road right here. So down here, if you look in my my right hand corner, there's this little man, and I just love this about Google Maps. And I might even zoom in a little bit more. Is that I'm going to take my little man, I'm going to drop him. Now, if you were to drop him, you see how all the blue, all that lights up. Everything that lights up there tells me that there's a street view for it. I'm going to put him back for a second because if you notice that when I did that, this didn't light up blue. Right, this road here didn't light up blue. So I'm gonna drag them again over there and show you that. See, there's no street view for that. So that could mean it's paved or it's not paved. And I'll show you how I tell whether it's paved when I can't get a street view or not. But let's just start out by doing street view. So I find the place where I wanna see if it's paved or not, and I drop him down. And there we go, there I'm on the road. Um, and so that's showing me the street view and I can see it's paved. And by doing this, it also allows me to look at the condition of that road too, because there's times where I think I want to take a route and then I drop my little man on the road and the road is in horrible condition. Um, the pavement is rough or sometimes it's been paved, but it's that, um, that uh, black top that has to be compressed. So they just kind of put down little pebbles of black top and then they just, you know, it gets compressed over time as cars drive over it. Um, I don't see a lot of that, but on occasion I see that. And that's not a road surface that I enjoy riding on. Um, the other thing that I sometimes see is a road just, it's like you can't even see the road anymore. The road is just all tar snakes. And um, if you haven't encountered tar snakes yet, that's basically just where, like you see how here there's there's cracks in the road that you can see. And they're not terrible cracks. So obviously, you know, uh, DOT has not had the need to fill them in yet. But eventually, you know, as those cracks worsen, DOT will come and fill them in with tar. Um, and so as a road is older and older and there's more and more cracks, they just keep filling it in with tar. Now, the reason that tar snakes are um, a little bit dangerous is because especially in the hot weather, more than the cold weather, but in the hot weather, because they're tar, they melt when it gets hot which kind of makes no sense, but you can really slip on those. If you're riding in the hot weather and you hit one of those trying to, you know, to, to go around a curve, um, you can be sure that you're going to lose traction on that back wheel. One, it's already slippery and two, you know, it's, it's soft. So, because the heat is making it so, 
Um, and usually when you're riding directly straight over a tar snake, there's no problem. Um, and there doesn't have to be a problem if you're riding over one, even in a curve, you just have to be aware of it and conscious of it. Um, and maybe not lean the bike too much or, you know, but stereotypically, I don't usually enjoy riding on those roads. Um, if it's the only path to take me to where I want to go, I'll ride that road. But doing the street view just gives you a lot of information on the road. Like I said, one, is it paved? Two, what's the condition of it? And, you know, this is this is a road that's in fairly good condition. So here, here are some cracks, um, which are not a problem, but eventually those, those will become tar snakes. And sometimes the DOT, um, instead of fixing a road and repaving it, you know, they'll just keep tar snaking it until I guess they get to the point where they really know they have to go there and, and repave the road. But this looks to me a, a fairly decent quality road. Um, so that's a road that I would ride. And then um, I click this back button up here um, to take me back to um, my road. And that was this road right here we were checking. And then, you know, what I might do is just spot check it all along. So I know it's paved up there and I just wanna see, is it also paved down here? And yes, it is still paved. It still looks like a quality road. And, you know, this is a road I do actually ride and I love to ride because, I mean, to me, just look at that scenery. It's not an extremely curvy road, but it's got a little, you know, a few curves here and there. It's not just a, a, a dead straight road, but um, for me, you know, this, this is eye candy for me. This is just like, I love this. And then the smells you get out when you're riding here, you know, the, those smells of, of um, just freshly cut grass a lot of times and just that beautiful country air. So this is kind of where I thrive in my riding environment. Now, let's say it was a really long road and you were like, well, I know, all right, so I know it's pretty paved and the road condition looks good, but let me just make sure it's paved all the way. So sometimes what I'll do is then um, I, I'll zoom in and down here on the left, I can pick different terrain that I can look at. Right now we're looking at map view, but if I click on this again, it'll turn it into satellite view. And so from the satellite view, I can see, yep, it's still paved here, paved here, and I can just kind of navigate through that road and, and just kind of look and see that, yes, this road looks like it is paved all the way to the end. We had moved our little blue guy and all those areas lit up that were able to have street view, except for this little road here which is Winford Brady Road. And let's say I'm like, well, I wanna take that road. So before I ride it though, and I can't do street view on it. So how am I gonna tell whether or not it's paved? And again, we just go back to our satellite view and I would look at it from where it branches off from 902. And although there is no uh, um, street view available for that road, you can clearly see, I see the two white lines on either side and I see the center yellow line right there. And I'm just going to take this for the duration of the road as much as I can. And just make sure that this road is paved for the whole duration of it until it reaches 42 at the bottom. And so far, this is a paved road. So I'll zoom out a little bit just to speed this up. Yep, it's paved, it's paved. And here it hits 42. So just because a road doesn't have street view doesn't necessarily mean that it's not paved. Um, and just because a road has, has street view doesn't mean that it is paved. So once you've looked over a certain area and you've used different major roads to create boxes or quadrants that you're going to ride uh, in the middle of to learn the roads a little bit better, knowing that you can't get lost because you're just going to always hit a road that you know. Now, all of a sudden, you have become a very familiar with those very, very secondary back roads that are in between um, those more major back roads that you know. Um, this is now how we build our, our road repository. So now I know these roads. So now I'm going to expand my view. Now, because I think this is Deep River. Is this Deep River? It doesn't say. I think that's Deep River. But in any event, um, we have this river here. And you know, when we're here, we there's nowhere that crosses this river. So in order to cross this river, we either have to do Souther City Glendon Road, or, you know, we have to do 22 over here. Um, but once you're familiar with that area, you could say, well, you know what, next time I go out and ride, um, and I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick this quadrant here. And maybe you, you know, start to increase your quadrant. Maybe your quadrant is, you know, these roads here, it's all, you know, it's here. You know, I would start just by saying, you know, in here, there's not a ton of roads in here. 
And again, I would look at that road and be like, well, that looks like a cool road. Let's check it out. Kelly Plantation Road. And I don't, I can't drop my guy there. So there's no street view. And so let's check it out and see if it's even paved. And it does look paved. Um, but because there's no street view and it looks pretty rural, I do want to look at this road and just kind of drive along it and make sure that it is paved the whole entire duration. And that looks like such a fun road only because it looks really remote. And, you know, to me that, that looks like a lot of fun. Um, I do love remote areas. Of course, we always have to be, um, paying attention and aware of our surroundings. And so this is an area where, um, where there could be, you know, some, some wildlife that we have to keep an eye out for. And that's true anywhere we ride, but especially the more remote we're riding, um, the more we have to be vigilant to that. What's going on here? Yeah, there's just a little bit dirt so that, you know, that's um, a dirt road and it looks like trucks have kind of dragged some dirt out on the road, but it still looks like a paved road. Here's a road that's not paved, so we wouldn't want to make a left down there. That's a dirt road. Um, so that's, you know, that's some good information for us there that we would maybe just want to get on this road and and just stay on this road. Now, here we go, though. This is why it is really important to look through the duration of a road, because now we've come into a situation where this road ceases to be paved. So, you know, it's not that you can't ride that road. It's just that you know that, hey, I'm going to take this road um, from what I can see, because this looks paved, and then this doesn't. And it's hard to see because I think the trees are blocking it from me, but I would say that this is the, the location of roundabout where that road ends. So, you know, I would know that this road here, which initially is paved and then it's not, that I would be like, hey, I'm just going to ride up to this road because I'm going to utilize this to turn around. Or of course, you can ride all the way up here if you're proficient at making that you turn in the middle of the road or you know you want to practice doing that. Of course, feel free to ride up there and turn around. Um, and so just because a road doesn't go all the way through doesn't mean you can't ride it because that actually does look like a fun road. And so, you know, from let's see the length of that, you know, that's I'm going to go back to map view. Um, from where we got on that. Back here at 27, that road goes all the way up here. So that that's a pretty cool road. Um, now, again, like I said, it depends what kind of rider you are. Um, it does kind of look like you're, you know, riding through somebody's property. <laughs> but, you know, who's to say that if you don't, you know, you feel confident, you could not continue to ride. Now, let's take a look at this. How long is it unpaved for? So we determined that it looks like it stops being paved somewhere in this area here. Um, and then it's unpaved for this length of time. And then we get back here and it might be paved here. I can't tell if that's still gravel, but here we start to see the, the white lines again on either side and the yellow uh, center line. And then that becomes a paved road once again. And it probably stays paved the rest of the way. So if you don't mind riding on dirt and gravel, you know, sometimes that can add to the adventure. So this is just kind of how I begin to explore roads and kind of learn uh, more about the area that I live in um, and, and the roads that I want to ride in. And so now I'm back on Street View. And um, so I'm riding on this road. It looks good. And so that's just a little way that I, that I take some time. Now, again, that's just my general area. And that's kind of my advice for you if you're a newer rider and you're trying to get more comfortable one riding on your own while learning to explore some areas that are outside of your comfort zone and learning roads because as motorcyclists yes we have gps's and while i do rely a lot on my gps i don't ever really rely on my gps to take me on a route i'm always looking at the roads and always mapping out my route and always having an idea of where i'm going um and then in the ride i'm just using my gps to kind of give me that turn by turn um but i kind of already have an idea of where i'm going now let's talk about if i am um, wanting to ride some roads out in a particular area let's say i want to travel to wilkesboro but I don't really know the roads out there so well. So now this is pushing your comfort zone even more in that, you know, I'm going to 
start in Pittsburgh. And I'm gonna use Google Maps to take me out to Wilkesboro. Um, and again, I'm gonna get into mapping particular points in that next video. Um, but this is taking me, Google Maps says, this is the route you're gonna take. And I say, well, Google Maps, it's not because I would like to avoid highways. Um, and so, you know, that's going to keep me off 21, which is, you know, just a, a it is a four lane highway, two lanes in either direction. And I'm going to stay off the interstates, which are usually what, you know, three and four lanes. Um, like I don't want to take, you know, interstate 74 out there. Now, if I want to get out there fast, I might do that. But I don't like being on those roads because um, I think it's they're boring, to be quite honest. And I would rather see some things along the way. Now, in this road route, it's just putting me on 64 the whole way. Um, or I could come down this route, which I think is going to be 49. I remember that's Stokes Ferry Road 49. Um, and that's that route, which takes you a little more out of the way, but it's a really, really scenic route. And so we get up there and and you know, again, either we could we could force our route by dropping pins, but I'm not I'm not getting into that today. But let's say, so we get out to Wilkesboro and now I'm looking around Wilkesboro and look how exciting some of these roads look. So again, as somebody who really loves to ride curvy roads, you know, there's a lot of roads just to explore out here. So, you know, I would try to figure out what are my main roads and I would get a little familiar with those. So there's 421 and then there's 221 and then there's 88 and then there's 18. So 18 and 88 are our major roads. Um, again, those are one lane roads either way. 421 is usually a two, uh, two lane in either direction, um, as is 221. And of course, sometimes that can change depending on the area that you're in. But these are all major roads that I know are paved. Um, so let's say I'm like, well, I've already ridden these um, and I want to kind of explore some of these roads in here. Are these paved roads? Is the terrain um, is, you know, good quality? And so one of the first things I can do is let's let's look at 18 because I already know this road, but let's say you don't know it. So you drop your guide down here on 18 and it shows you the road. So now we're on 18, which is a really fun road. You know, some of it, it starts off a little bit straighter, um, but you definitely get into some nice, um, you know, um, sweeping turns and all that kind of stuff. And the scenery is just beautiful. Um, but then I'm like, wow, well, you know, whatever this is in here, this, this looks really cool. Now I can tell you from my experience of using Google maps is that this is a much smaller vein than this, and it's in the mountains. So I'm going to wager a guess that these probably are not paved roads, but they could be. Now, the first thing I'm going to do to check that out is I'm going to drop my little guy and they don't light up blue. So there's no street view for those. So those are really, really, really rural. But as I said, just because there's no street view doesn't necessarily mean they're not paved. So I click on my street view and I zoom in a little bit and they are paved. So there you go. That was kind of a surprise because I did kind of expect those not to be paved, but that looks like a really fun road. Now, here's the thing. It might not be paved the entire way because now it's kind of hard to tell, but I'm going to say that that is not paved. And, you know, sometimes you've got roads that are paved and they just don't have the paint marking on them. Um, but this road is definitely paved here. So it would kind of be one of those things where you'd have to be like, well, I, I'm going to ride it to the extent that I know it's paved and, and I may have to turn around. Um, but we know that this road is paved at least as far as this. Um, and we can't really see there very well, but it looks like it continues to be paved here. So, you know, that's a road that I probably would get on and want to do some exploring on. And if I got to a place where it wasn't paved, then I would just know that I've got to turn around and I've got to go back. Or I've already looked at the map and I say, well, I think it's only not paved for a half a mile or a mile. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try riding that road. So, um, that's all I'm going to cover today because that was that was a lot. I would just use that technique anywhere that I'm riding, you know, for for this road here. You know, what is that road? Can I drag my guy? No, I can't drag my guy. And if I go to the satellite view, what does that road look like? Am I able to see it? So obviously, if I can't see it, I'm not going to ride it. But now it, this road comes out of the woods. 
my computer has a mind of its own today. Um, and I can see that this clearly looks like a gravel road. So then that would be a road that I probably want to stay off of. So there's really a lot of information that you can get on Google Maps. You know, it's it's just getting comfortable to be able to explore those roads and do your research. And it is time consuming. Um, you know, and I know that it's not everybody's game. Um, but this is something I love to do is that I would just love to explore and say, hey, what's what's along my route here? Um, what views are there? Um, which the cool thing about the, the Blue Ridge Parkway on Google Maps is it it highlights for you your different overlooks. And so then I'll even use that if I'm going to ride the Blue Ridge, um, say, hey, is this is this an overlook that I want to stop at? And is it worth looking at? Um, I've been at this one before. This is a nice one. It's you know, definitely not one of the highest elevation overlooks, but it's nice. So I think, you know, learning how to use your tools and learning how to use them well um, can really give you a lot of information. And, and in my opinion, makes you a more independent and a more confident rider when it comes to riding by yourself. So, you know, they always say knowledge is power. And in this situation, I definitely have to say, I feel that and believe that 100%. So I hope today was good at giving you some information and some guidance in how we go about starting to plan out some roads that we might want to ride. How do we get to know different roads and become familiar so that we can go out and we have that repository of roads already banked in our mind to, when we're riding, we say, hey, I know where this road goes or I know where that road goes. And um, you know, we can really start to ride our local areas very independently, free of, of technology, which to me is always the best scenario. But when you want to ride beyond your area, knowing how to utilize your tools like this um, are really just a great resource and just helping you have fun, have some great adventures and feel confident in doing it. So um, anyway, I hope this was helpful for you today and check back because um, I will be making that video soon where I give the specific details now on how to map the ride and how to drop pins to get Google Maps to take me on the exact roads that I want to ride without, without it having a mind of its own. So thank you so much for following. Remember, be brave, be resilient, be adventurous and tenacious, and I hope to see you out on the road.